Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, we're going to step back a second from looking at macros to understand a concept incredibly important to the category of macros we've been looking at more recently, and that is understanding the concept of white space. So we've looked at the include macro. We can include the contents of one passage in another. We've also looked at the print macro. We can print various output, especially the output of various expressions. Well, as we saw in the previous example of raising the virtual chicken, we ended up with a little bit of a problem. That is, the more complex our code has gotten within passages, as we use more macros together, we suddenly end up with lots of extra lines we don't really want, lots of extra space. The term white space, we use it to describe the usage of space and all these empty lines. We need to understand how SugarCube understands white space, this empty space we're accidentally creating with macros, and then how we can kind of shape its understanding of white space to our own ends. Let's begin, though, by rewinding a little bit. When I first introduced the link macro, we, I also introduced the term silently, and I've used it across a number of videos in SugarCube to get its building up to this point. When I introduced silently, it was describing the ignoring of all output, and this was incredibly intentional because there is a particular macro with that ex exact name, silently. The silently macro, as we might imagine from how I've been explaining this term, ignores everything. And it's one of a number of different tools to help us understand how we again can work with white space, the spaces and extra lines we use with macros, and how we can shape it to our own ends. So let's begin by looking at this term in its macro form. So again, silently means ignore all output. And here it is, the silently macro. As we might imagine, it ignores everything that happens within it, all possible output. So how we see right here, can't see me. And if we go ahead and play from this point, we in fact won't see it. It's silent. It's silently running. So we've seen this with the link macro how its contents is silent and it runs silently. There are ways, though, that we can create output or adjust what's being displayed to a reader. And we've seen the include macro start to do that and the print macro start to do that, but again, we run into this issue of white space. So one of the ways we can address it is using the silently macro, and there are other ways I'm going to now talk about. So if we want to ignore all output completely, we can put a bunch of code and just completely ignore it. Silently is the best choice. If there are some situations where we'd rather have some lines ignored but some lines not ignored, there's a concept called line continuation. This uses the backslash. Let's let it example two. So for us, as authors, we see this is all one line of text. But when the reader sees it, because of this use of this symbol, this backslash, at the end of every line, it will be continued as if all of these lines was just one line. So let's go ahead and see this. I'm going to go ahead and start the story right here, and then let's look at this example. According to the reader, this is all one line of text, but it's not for us as authors. So one of the ways we can start to break this up is, again, using silently. We can ignore all output if we want to. But if we want to get a little clever about how we do things, we can continue some lines into the next. And notice I have a little bit of space after the words and then the continuation, the space and the continuation. So when a reader sees it, there's just the spaces between words. But when we see it as authors, it's just one line across here. Let's look at this in the use of macros. Again, there might be some cases where we want to use multiple macros, but we don't necessarily want to ignore all output. It's not, again, our goal. So in example three, notice right here, we've got multiple lines of macros. However, the reader won't see this. We are cleverly using line continuation to create the appearance of one line. And in fact, I'm combining it with our knowledge of how the print macro works to generate output. So notice right here we have the set macro, the if macro, the print macro, the if macro, and the print macro again, combining our knowledge of a bunch of different macros together, but also now with our understanding of white space, this generation of extra lines or extra spaces we may not always want. In this case, 
because I'm using line continuation after every macro line, SugarCube will combine it all, do a line continuation, all as one output. So just like in the last example, the reader will only see one line, but it's being generated and again using our knowledge of a bunch of different macros together. So let's go ahead and start the story from this place right here. This is one line of output, as far as the reader is concerned. Right there. But again, using our knowledge of line continuation to selectively choose which things we want to continue and collapsing, if you prefer that term, a bunch of the white space down to only one line. So, based on what we now know, we can ignore all output, if that's our goal, using silently. But silently around everything, it's going to ignore all output. We can also get a little clever and use a line continuation by choosing kind of what lines we want to continue to others. We can create the appearance of one line of output working with the print macro. And again, that's why I mentioned in an earlier video, it becomes incredibly useful as we think about white space, in particular how we want to output things. So let's look at one final example and then I'll close out this video. There might be some cases where you want to ignore all output. Silently is the best choice. There might be other cases where you want to be a little more selective on a line-by-line -line basis, and so line continuation might be a better choice. As a third category of things, there might be situations where you don't want new lines, but you do want spaces between words. For this, we're using the no BR or the no break rule macro. So in programming terms, the break rule is what breaks from one line to the next. If there are no break rules, then any new lines generated will be collapsed back into single spaces. So just like we saw in the previous example, this will also be a single line, will be a single line because each break rule, that is each breaking of the line, will be lost to just a single space. So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's start the story from over here. This will also be a single line. In each case here, across these four examples, notice that I'm either generating one line of output or no output whatsoever. So silently is always the best choice if we want no output whatsoever, especially more complex code, and we will use it increasingly in future videos. If we want a little more clever, line continuation is probably our friend, especially as we work with more complex macros where we want some output and then we don't want other output, as we saw in example three. Example four shows us that there are some certain situations where we don't want to break rules, that is new lines, but we might want some spaces between words. We may want a whole bunch of text and then kind of condense that down to a single space between words using no BR or no break rule. So this has been a video of starting to consider white space as a more important concept as we think about presentation and the display of content to readers. Again, if we want to ignore all output, silently is the best choice. If we want to ignore some output but do line continuations for others, the backslash or line continuation symbol is a great choice. We saw in example two and in example three. If we're more interested in ignoring the break rule, the no BR, we can use the no BR macro instead. And all of these three choices, again, get us considering the space generated by macros, the white space generated by the code we're using. As we start to work with these, and especially as we consider the print macro in connection to what we now know about white space and how SugarCube understand it, we can start to create much more complex presentation of data by working with our combination of concepts, white space in particular, and our existing knowledge of the displaying macros we know, include and print, and now working with the concept of white space in SugarCube 2.36 and Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.